It was a series opener. Another solid performance from Matapana. And a convincing rainbow victory. Last night it was another rainbow romp. Today the Bows will attempt to repeat the performance. from Rainbow Stadium, it's University of Hawaii Baseball. This afternoon's game, the Rainbows of Hawaii against the Huskies of Washington. Hello again, everybody. A very pleasant Saturday afternoon to you. I'm Jim Leahy, along with Pal Elridge. Pal, today, game two of this three-game series between Hawaii and Washington. Last night, the Rainbows with big innings, lots of runs, and a pretty convincing victory over Washington. And that necessitated the Washington coach Ken Knudsen to hold his team in the locker room for over an hour. It was quite a lecture. Well, what the lecture was about was not necessarily wins and losses. They weren't really concerned about losing the game, but how they lost the game. Simple execution and fundamentals are like missing cutoff people. That was a big concern. And on, on rundowns I and mean, how they executed the rundown. So it was not wins and losses, but it was, it was rather how they were in the game and how they played the game. So I expect Washington to come out today and play a little bit better. Rainbows, of course, want to keep this streak going. Washington's still looking for their first win of the season. When we come back, we'll introduce you to the starting lineup. Please stand for the National Anthem.
Welcome back to Randall Stadium, everyone. Let's uh, see how Washington will bat in this game. The Oscar Mayer batting order, number 14, Joe Trippi, in center field will bat first, then Matt Wimmer in right field will hit second. Randy Jorgensen at first base. Darren Doty in left field will bat fourth. Brett Merrick will be the designated hitter and hit fifth. Christian Shuey will catch and hit sixth. Sean Daly at third base will hit seventh. Brett Newell, the shortstop, will bat eighth. And Ryan Rutz, the second baseman, will hit ninth. The Rainbows defensively, Tyler Sheff behind the plate. Sean Rogers at first, Corey Ishigo at second. Cy Farinas at shortstop, Kelly Fair at third base. The outfield, Kirk Taguchi in left, Ken Harrison in center, and Franz Ewan in right. And the 7-11 starting pitcher profile for Hawaii, Andrew McNally with a 1-1 record. A fastball around 82 miles an hour. He has an outstanding curveball. He throws a lot of strikes, and he doesn't waste time on the mound. He's a guy with a lot of poise. So look for a quick game when, when McNally pitches. Andrew from Perth, Australia, 24 and one-third innings. You see his earned runs, seven earned runs. McNally... With 23 hits, he has walked eight, and he has struck out 21. His last appearance against Cal, he had no decision in eight innings of work. Gave up two runs, eight hits, walked two, and struck out nine. California went on to win that game in 13 innings, three to two. There you see the umpire, Keith Howe. He is behind the plate. Bill Leonard at first base, and that is the correct spelling, we remind you. And Mike Evans at third base. Joe Trippi will lead it off in the top half of the first inning. It will be Trippi, Wimmer, and Jorgensen. Trippi batting 333-6418. He was two for three last night, had quite a night. A triple, a double, and he scored three runs. He was our player of the game. So Andrew McNally, the Australian, ready to work. And McNally, of course, is a freshman. And that is worthy of notes. First pitch right there for a strike. All in one. So Washington still looking for their first victory of the season. Ken Knudsen in his first year. His team's record is his record, 0-5. And, and so last night they had a long meeting in the visitors' locker room. It is an option that visiting teams are given here at Rainbow Stadium. Some teams just come in to the dugout and then they go right back to the hotels with their uniforms on. But Washington took advantage of the visitors' locker room last night. And Knudsen then took advantage for some very pointed oratory. Two and, oh, two and one, excuse me, the count to uh, Joe Trippi, Matt Wimmer, the right fielder, and Randy Jorgensen here in the top half of the first inning. McNally, one and one on the season, 2.59 earned run average. He has one complete game. That ball hit up the middle over the head of Cyferinas. And Trippi leads off again. Last night he led off with a triple. First hit off of Andrew McNally. Well, Trippi has got a loop in his swing, so he doesn't extend the club head out. So what he will do is he will hit the ball to the left side. That time he hit the ball right over Farinas. Last time he hit a double and a triple to left field. The matter is uh, Matt Wimmer. Wimmer making his first appearance in the series. He did not play in last night's game. He is 0 for 4 on the season. He has walked once, struck out twice. Lines this one into the upper deck, and the count is 0-1. Rainbow's in at double play depth here in the top half of the first inning. The wind, a gentle breeze blowing out toward right field at the moment. Washington, a member of the Pac-10 North. Wimmer from Federal Way, Washington, a dribbler to first, the second. That is high, and that ball goes into left field. So Rogers tried to feed Farinas to start the 3-6-3 double play, and he lofted the ball over Farinas' head into left field. That is an error. But when he feels this ball and you look at him throw, he doesn't really extend toward the bag. You see how he kind of stands up? And when he doesn't extend toward the bag and transfer weight from back to front foot, that's what usually happens. Two on and nobody on for Washington here in the top half of the first inning. Randy Jorgensen, the batter, 333 on the season. 
He is 7 for 21, two doubles, two runs batted in. He was two for four last night, and he drove in two runs for Washington. McNally in trouble already, and he has not recorded the first out. Pitch over for a strike. Washington again picked to win the Pac-10 North. These two teams met in the West Regional at Tucson, Arizona last spring. Hawaii eliminated Washington and really pounced on them last night. The 0-1 pitch that's lifted into the red seats. Nice yeah, souvenir. Little guy gets yeah. it, huh? Well, Washington had five days of practice outdoors before they came, before they began their season at Texas A&M. And so, as we discussed last night, this happens to all teams that, that come right out of the field house. It takes a while to get their game in order. Jorgensen requests time, and it is granted. Jorgensen from Linwood, Washington, 6'1", junior. Jorgensen, a very consistent hitter. Trippy and Wimmer to their leads, and the pitch, that's high and tight. And the count is one and two to Jorgensen. Rainbow outfield consistently straight away. Rainbows do very little shifting. That's true. So Jorgensen back in here in the top of the first and the one two pitch off speed that's dribble foul off to the right side. Again the dimensions of Rainbow Stadium 340 down the line 380 in the alley 400 straight away center field and you have to maneuver the ball over maximum security big blue. Well the only time an outfield should switch is if the batter's tendency is to say pull the ball then you're going to if, if he's a proven pull, uh, pull hitter then you're going to move everybody to the pull side but there's really no sense in moving people around if you don't know the guys one two pitch to Jorgensen line drive off the glove of Rogers dribbles into right field Drippy, Trippy comes around third and he will score going to third on the play is Wimmer Jorgensen with another RBI Well, Randy Jorgensen is the best hitter on the Husky team, and you see the pitch, it's outside and low, but Jorgensen's able to pull that, so it was a good pitch by McNally, but sometimes good pitches get hit. For Jorgensen, that is his third run batted in on the season, and again, Washington leads in the top of the first inning. This time, Washington has much more going for it, still no one out, runners at the corners. Breaking ball is high. One ball and no strikes to Darren Doty. Doty batting 235. He is 4 for 17 on the year. Last night, he was 0 for 4. Wore the collar. Two strikeouts. He's from Sequim, Washington. 6'1", senior. Hope we're pronouncing that right. Sequim, Washington. That's in there for a strike. One and one. Well, in the 7-11 starting pitcher profile, I mentioned that curveball, and you can see from the shot, of our from our center field camera just how good that breaking ball is. McNally's 1-1 one, one pitch swung on and missed. Good crisp fat ball and it's one and two. So Darren Doty will step back in. Doty looking for his first extra base hit of the year. He's driven in four. That pitch misses on the corner low. And the count holds two balls and two strikes. The 2-2 two -two by McNally. Ground ball to the second baseman, Ishigo. He feeds Farinas. Relay to first, double play. Run will score 2-0 Washington. Well, in the top of the first inning, with runners on first and third, you must really give up that run, and Hawaii did the smart thing, went for the 4-6-3 double play and got it, although the run did score. That'll bring up Brett Merrick. His name may be familiar if you watch last night's game, because Merrick was one of the 
Washington pitchers last night. He went three and two thirds, gave up seven runs, four of which were earned in last night's game. It's a comebacker to McNally. And McNally throws on to Rogers to retire the side. Two runs on two hits, nobody left on after one half inning of play. Washington two, and the Rainbows of Hawaii getting ready. Oscar Meyer batting order for the Rainbows. Corey Ishigo will lead off at second base, then Kurt Taguchi in left field. Franz Ewan will bat third. Then Sean Rogers, Rob Williams, and Kenny Harrison. Then the bottom of the order, Kelly Fair, Tyler Sheff, and Cy Farinas. There you see the defense for Washington. Randy Jorgensen, Ryan Rutz on the right side, Brett Newell, Sean Daly on the left, the outfield, Darren Doty, Joe Trippi, and Matt Wimmer. The catcher for this afternoon's game is Christian Shuey. And uh, the pitcher is Chad Hartvigson. And the starting pitcher profile for Chad Hartvigson. This will be the third time that the Hawaii fans will get an opportunity to see Hartvigson pitch. He pitched for Notre Dame three years ago and for the Huskies last year. And this is the third appearance. He's got a moving fastball. And one of the strong points about Hartvigson, Jimmy, is that he throws strikes. He also was the ERA leader, the earned run average leader in the National Baseball Congress this past summer. Hartvigson is appearing in his second game, making his second start of the season. He has pitched five innings, has given up one run on three hits, has walked one and struck out four. Pitched against the Rainbows in 1990 here at Rainbow Stadium. And he considered that his best game of the year. He threw five innings against Hawaii when he was with Notre Dame, allowed one earned run on three hits, two walks, and three strikeouts. But that was in 1990. And this is now. Corey Ishigo leads off for the Rainbows here in the top of the first inning. Ishigo batting 289, 13 for 45 of the year. A double, a triple, and five runs batted in. First pitch to him, strike. Ishigo has walked 13 times. He has struck out only once. Last night he was 0 for 2, but he had a sacrifice fly. Driving in a run, 5-6 sophomore from Kailua. The 0-1 pitch by Hartvigson. Fastball off the heel of Hartvigson, and Isigo will have a base hit. Well, Corey Isigo again proving that he's a good choice as leadoff hitter. To combine that with that 13 walks now, he gets himself a base hit right here. Here's Kirk Taguchi, Rainbow left fielder batting 375. Hartvigson from the stretch, first pitch on the edge, inside edge for a strike. Taguchi last night one for four, he drove in a run. He has one home run and six runs batted in on the season. Shigo at first, short lead. Hartvigson works the plate, breaking ball inside. Like that high kick? Well, the, f the first pitch he threw, he used a slide step. So here's a guy that's been around, and it looks like just by watching him either slide step or use the big kick, uh, that, uh, you know, he, he will do all he can to hold the runners. But no, I don't like the big kick. Bouncer, that is into left field for a base hit for Taguchi. And the first two rainbows get aboard. That ball had just enough on it to get by Brett Newell. Newell was 
deep in the hole, even if he would have gotten to the ball, Taguchi would have been able to beat it out. Yeah, and I like that description, had just enough on it to get by Newell, and I agree with your assessment that had he even fielded that, there's no way he would have gotten Taguchi at first base. Oh, why, thank you. Boy, I'll tell you, you got it all right there in the call. Here's Franz Ewan. Ewan batting 346, 18 for 52, five doubles, one home run, and 14 runs batted in. He is tied with Cy Farinas, who bats in the ninth spot for the most RBI on this team. 14. Ewan looks at a breaking ball, takes low, one ball and no strikes. If you just joined us, Washington, two runs in on two hits in the top half of the first inning. Rainbow's trying to come back here. They have two hits so far. No one out here in the bottom of the first. Ewan in last night's game, one for three with a double, and he drove in a run. Franz poised. Hartvigson works the plate. Fastball low. Good job by the catcher, Shuey. Rainbow starters are batting 313. The Husky starters are batting 231. You're shaking the box for the Midas touch in it. I am indeed. And uh, you want me to pull out a card here? No, not a card, a number. A number? Well, it's it's a card with a number on it. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Voila. Five. A five. We will play the Midas Touch I mean, in the fifth. It's amazing how you do that. The box is now hermetically sealed. So the Midas Touch ending the bottom half of the fifth in today's episode of Rainbow Baseball. Ishigo and Taguchi on the bases and the pitch to Ewan. That's high. Three and one. Well, by the way that uh, Shuey caught the ball, looked like he was expecting a pitch other than that curveball because he got fooled back there. Luckily, he was able to catch it. Diamond head in sunshine over the right field fence. Clouds building up over the Koalas. And Franz Ewan getting ready to step in here. Three and one to him. Two on and no one out in the bottom of the first inning. Strike two. Hartvigson gets the sign from Shuey. And the 3-2 payoff pitch. High bouncer, the shortstop Newell plays it. His only play is the first in time to Jorgensen. The runners move up. Ishigo to third. And Taguchi to second. And the batter will be Sean Rogers. So Rogers will step in. Rogers batting 306 at game time with a double and seven runs batted in. 0 for 4 last night, 6-2 junior from Klamath Falls, Oregon. So he's familiar with the Northwest. Hartley's in now with one out, but runners at second and third, breaking ball outside and low. Left-hander against left-hander here. Infield drawn in. Pitch of the plate. Fly ball to the gap. Going back is Doty. He will make the catch. Tagging the third is Ishigo. Ishigo will come in to score. Going to third is Taguchi. He slides in safely. It is two to one. So a sacrifice fly for Taguchi. That's his seventh RBI of the season. With two out, the batter will be Rob Williams. Said to Gucci, it's Rogers. Rogers with the seventh run batted in. The Gucci's at third. 
Well, Rodgers just really isn't pulling the ball like I know he wants to. And it, it will be a, a matter of time, but eventually he'll get around to be hitting the ball line to line. Chigo has come in on the sacrifice fly by Rodgers. Good base running by the Rainbows that time. Mm -hmm. They were able to move both runners. Williams, the designated hitter. Williams batted 357. That ball is just foul. Williams, the senior from Santa Rosa, California, with a double and three runs batted in. Last night he was a pinch hitter. Came up with a base hit and he scored a run. Well, for the past several games, the first four batters have been the same. Ishigo, Taguchi, Ewan, and then Rogers, and three out of four of them are, are, are switch hitters. And now you put a Rob Williams in the five hole, and four out of the first five rainbows are switch hitters. I said pinch hitters, didn't I? Mm -hmm. But I mean switch hitters. That's outside. One so, ball and two strikes to Williams. Go ahead, old pal. Well, that, that may really make, allows you to load your lineup. I mean, it doesn't really matter who's throwing. I think that's the reason they dropped Kenny Harrison down to the sixth spot, because he is a left-handed hitter against a left-handed pitcher. Because otherwise, with a right-hander, Harrison's always batting fifth. One, two, pitch. That ball lofted to right field. Wimmer is there, and Wimmer puts it away for out number three. Rainbows come back with one in the bottom of the first. After one, Washington leads two, one. Halftime, Rainbow Basketball, Hawaii over UTEP at El Paso, 37 to 21. The batter for Washington lifts the fly ball to right field. That's Kristen Shuey, and Franz Ewan puts it away. So one out on one pitch in the second inning, and the batter is Sean Daly, the third baseman. Daly, one for 10 on the year, which means he is batting 100. Thank you. And he has no extra base hits. He's not driven in any runs. Last night, he was 0 for 4 with a strikeout. Andrew McNally, quite a study. You would not think, if you stereotype that, since he's from Australia, he would be so proficient in throwing American baseballs. Second out is recorded as Daly lifts it to center field and Ken Harrison. Well, now, here's a guy, Andrew McNally, that's 5'10", 165 pounds. Yet, he can really generate arm speed to get the ball up to 82 miles an hour. So watch what he does just as he releases the ball. I mean, he really explodes toward the plate. So this, this guy is a real deal. I mean, he's a, a guy that uh, Coach Murakami was quoted as saying is a blue chipper. In all the years I've known Coach Murakami, I've never heard him say anybody is a blue chipper. So when you hear the word blue chipper from his mouth, you're going to know that this guy, is, this guy is something, and I think he's proven that he is. One and one to Brett Newell. That's over to the Washington shortstop. Newell 222 on the season. 
But watch how he gets to the top and now just explodes toward home plate. Also, he works fairly quickly between pitches. Newell last night, 0 for 3. The 2-2 two -two pitch swung on, and that's just ticked foul back. Two and two, two down here in the second inning. Washington leading 2-1. Two, two runs on two hits for Washington. Rainbows have one run on two hits, and they have committed one error. Newell waits the 2-2 pitch. Off speed, that's lookout lined into the orange seats, drops down to the blue. Souvenir for that young lady. 2-2 pitch. That's lifted up, perhaps on the roof, which means... Yes, it was. And we it, bring out the volume. That's number 29 for the year. Baseball trivia. Things that you... Uh, things that you really want to know about the game, but either were not informed of or were too timid to to ask the most golf ball thrown onto the field during a game six there's a blooper up the middle over as he has it throws desperation throw and just misses getting it well this is good hustle by Corey Ishigo he does all he can to get to the ball and plant and throw he has to throw on the run away going away from the base that's a fine play maximum effort that time by Corey Ishigo base hit for Newell third hit of the game for Washington and the batter is Brian Rutz batting 231 on the season the record for the most golf ball thrown onto the field during a game 1000 in 1949 <laughs> hundreds of golf caddies were way out of bounds when they attended a 1949 game as guests of the Boston Red Sox they pelted the field and players with a thousand golf balls. <laughs> oh boy. And every one of those golf balls were retrieved by the guys who golf in the field and were very happy about it, I bet. No, the players had to run for cover in the dugout. Lasted about 10 <laughs> minutes until the kids finally ran out of golf balls. The maintenance crew kept running out and scooping them up and ducking at the same time. They were playing Philadelphia. And the Philadelphia players kept trying to get their caps go onto the field and fill them with golf balls so they could use them to play golf later, but none of them did. It was dangerous. 1949. That's popped up to Taguchi and left. He makes the catch. Washington is done in the second inning. After an inning and a half, 2-1. Karatsky. We move to the bottom of the second inning. Kenny Harrison, the center fielder, Kelly Fair, the third baseman, and Tyler Sheff, the catcher for the Rainbows of Hawaii. 2-1, Washington. 
Chad Hartigson pitching for Washington. Harrison batting 271 with five doubles, a grand slam home run, and 12 runs batted in. He was 0 for 4 last night. He walked twice. So Kenny steps in. Minus today, the gloves. He has eschewed the Mickey Mouse gloves. <laughs> All in one to him. GTE Hawaiian Tell will contribute to the scholarship fund of the University of Hawaii as we honor two players from each team who goes beyond the call in today's game. One ball and one strike to Kenny Harrison. Rainbow's trailing by one run here in the second inning. Hartvigson's pitch, fastball swung on and missed. Hartvigson comes back. Oh, good pitch. Bent away from Harrison. Waves at it and missed. And so Kenny Harrison strikes out. That is the first strikeout recorded by Hartvigson. And the batter is Kelly Fair. Hartvigson really had a good bend on this pitch. Look at this. Yeah, it did. It, uh, in the 7-11 starting pitcher profile, it was mentioned that he does have that good curveball. And when he starts it off at the middle of the plate and breaks away from left-handers, it's going to be tough for them to hit it. It's the Kelly Fair taking for a strike. Fair has played uh, sparingly this year because of his injury, batting 333, 3 for 9. The 0 1 pitch. That's low. Fair has driven in one run. Good look at Chad Hartvigson. Ground ball on one hop to Brett Newell. He works at the first two now. And that will bring up Tyler Sheff, the rainbow catcher. Sheff reports for duty today after an excellent game last night, his best of the year at the plate. He was three for three with three runs batted in. Sheff, 250 with one double and seven runs batted in. He's nine for 36. Off speed over for a strike, 0 and 1. I like his balance better now when he swings through the ball. Before, he used to collapse the back side, uh, his right side, and kind of lean back in order to swing. But now his balance is good all the way through the swing, and I think it's making him a good hitter, a better hitter. 0-2, oh, the count. Art Vixen has had things his way this inning, striking out Harrison and getting fair on a meat ground ball. And the 0-2 pitch. That's uh, Parkinson transferred from Notre Dame to Washington because he just wasn't getting enough pitching time. He just didn't quite fit into the Notre Dame program, so he decided to go to somewhere where he could fit in, and he has fit in very nicely at Washington. The 1-2 pitch. That misses, 2-2. Two and two. But Parkinson right now has Chef a little off balance at the plate. I mean, he's giving them all kinds of pitches that have dipped and bent at him. That's a fastball low. We have to, to apologize. We said that, um, let me see. We Doty. said that, jo that uh, was it? Doty is yeah, from Sequim, Sequim, Washington. There's no such town as Sequim. It's Squim, Squim, Washington. Even though it is spelled S-E-Q-U-I-M. Right, because I would have assumed it was Sequim as well. But it's Squim, Washington, so we apologize to all of the populace well, of that metropolis. You actually got to figure, I mean, because if they in Oregon pronounce O-A-L-O-H-A, -O our aloha yes. as aloha. Yeah. <laughs> Which leads to the next question of how Squim got its name. Hmm. Myriad Good possibilities. Question. Good yes. question. Tyler Chef hanging in. The full count now to him. Three balls and two strikes here 
in the bottom half of the second inning. The 3 2 pitch. Ground ball up the middle, but right there is Newell. Throws on to Jorgensen, and the Rainbows go in order in the bottom half of the second inning through 2 2 1 Huskies. Today's most valuable volunteer is Rodney Chong from Kaneohe. Rodney has been coaching AYSO soccer divisions four through six in the Kaneohe region for the past seven years. Between 1983 and 89, he coached Little League Baseball. And on March 1st, he'll start coaching Kaneohe Bobby Sox, Mini Sox division. Rodney wins a $125 certificate from Time Supermarket, certificates from Honolulu Cellular, Briars Ice Cream, and Coca-Cola. And he could win the grand prize, a Royal Caribbean cruise to win Sonata, Mexico, courtesy of DDIO and Creative Holidays. Congratulations, Rodney Chong from Kaneohe. Washington will go to the top of the order in the third inning. Joe Trippi, Matt Wimmer, and Randy Jorgensen. Interesting when Jorgensen comes up. See if we can catch this. <laughs> For the squeamish of you, you best yeah, not you watch. best not watch. Yes, but that's coming up here. See if we can get it when Jorgensen steps into the on deck circle, which is uh, the next batter. The pitch, strike on the inside corner. What Jorgensen does, what he will try to do, is he will he, expectorate. He will expectorate. Yes. And then he tries to hit the expected expectorate with his bat. The expectoration. Yes, <laughs> with his bat. So I, I guess if you wanted that in English, keep your eye on the spittle. Yeah. He spits and tries to hit it with, with his bat. bat. Yes. yes. Oh, and two to Joe Trippi here in the third inning. McNally comes back 0-2. Oh, that ball lost it. Retreating on the ball is Farinas and makes the catch. And that will bring up Wimmer. Well, I guess Jorgensen does it, and he's the next batter when he is at the plate. He's at the plate? Yeah. Oh, I Not see. in the batter, sir. All right. Okay. Uh, the remember the guy from Air Force that used, yeah. used to lick his bat? Oh, yes, I remember him. He is now an officer someplace, commanding men. Protecting us. Yes. That ball lifted <laughs> in foul territory. But that's really getting, you know, that's getting... Uh, a good grip on things, huh? Well, I remember him as being a real tough player, though. I mean, he really played hard. And he was one of the better players Air Force had at, well, you know, that year. Yeah, but, but when they were growing up, you know, when, and, and admittedly, it's getting to be a long time ago, but here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. When we were growing up, my, I have an Aunt Louisa who used to lose things because she was absent-minded. She got into an accident one time, and when they were investigating it, she took the policeman to the wrong corner. You know, <laughs> like that. But she said, every time you lose something, there's a ground ball up the middle past the diving Farinas into center field for a base hit. So Wimmer, second time, but he has reached base. He is one for two, reached in the first inning on the fielder's choice. Mm -hmm. 
This ball had enough sting to it. That's, uh, that little diamond there was for you art majors. We will slip in little things for you art majors to contemplate. Or philosophy majors there. Have you look at the edge of the universe from time to time and explore quantum quantum uh, physics. Well, here's Jorgensen. Let's see if he steps out. If he spits and tries to hit it with his bat. But if he hits the first pitch, well, that's academic. That got a piece of him. He may not spit this time. Well, this one stays right down and hits him right on that right puppy. Those things hurt. I've had people ask me, why don't batters or catchers or umpires, well, umpires somewhat do this, but why don't they wear a, a steel toe up there? And I said, well, good idea, except you can't run in them. Well, he hasn't done it yet. Probably has a painful tuk to, so he's not doing it all in one. A lot of subplots going on here. McNally with a check throw to first diving back in is Wimmer. Anyway. My auntie used to, lo used to uh, lose things a lot. Let's, uh, let's see. See, Jorgensen did it just then, and we didn't get him. He did it. You see that? Yeah. He spit, and he tried to hit it with his bat. <laughs> then, then he wipes it off with his glove. The 0-1 pitch lays off the ball. Let's see if he steps out here and does it. Watch Jorgensen now. Steps out. He's, he's going to look into the dugout. There, boom, see? <laughs> That's pretty good. Cool. Yeah, he's not bad. He's not bad. Check throw to first and diving back in again is Wimmer. Jorgensen will do it. I don't know if he'll do it every time. Let's see. No, not that time. <laughs> One it's ball. Just, of, hey, it's, it's just something that you pick up, I guess, and it stays with you. Time is called. And that, that was really called late. That was called late. You know, you can request time, but that was really late. Which gives me a chance to complete the story about my Aunt Louisa. Okay. Right? She says, whenever you lose something, right, mm -hmm. you spit in your hand. I told you this. And then you hit it like the judo chop with your other hand. Okay. And wherever it goes, that's where you look. <laughs> Pitch to Jorgensen. Swung on. And missed, and it's one and two. I hope... For those of you who are rather squeamish at Jorgensen and what he does, hope that didn't offend you too much. You did it again just there? Yeah, huh? he did, yes. One ball and two strikes to Randy Jorgensen here with a runner at first and Washington leading two to one here in the top of the third inning. Pitch by McNally. That's a wild pitch will go to the backstop, making the turn at second is Wimmer. And the first wild pitch by Andrew McNally. The ball is way in front of Tyler Sheff. Now, remember last night we were talking about uh, if the ball is farther in front of the plate. I shouldn't say it that. Well, what I mean is if, if, it's, if it bounces way in front of the plate, that you can't get down on the ball. That time you saw Chef do that and the ball went over his uh, shoulder. You've got to stay up a little bit, but it's really a tough decision to make because you don't have a lot of time to do it. 2-2 two, two picks around Randy Jorgensen. That will fall to the turf untouched in foul territory. And the count remains two balls and two strikes to Jorgensen. There he is. He just did it again, didn't he? Uh, two times in a row. I wonder how he picked that up. I have, <laughs> I have no idea. Which major leaguer did he copy? I don't, maybe some little guy will copy him now, and his mother will go crazy. <laughs> two balls and two strikes. Jorgensen hanging in against McNally, trying to pick up Wimmer in scoring position at second base. And the 2-2 two -two pitch. Ground ball rolled to Farinas, backhands, and now they have Wimmer Hung up between second and third. Fair chasing him back. Ishigo now has it. Wimmer running toward third. Farinas. Farinas will tag him. In the meantime, Jorgensen moves on to second base.
I think that one's six four five four six. No, <laughs> six five four six. Six five four six. This is a bad base running mistake by Matt Wimmer. When you're on second base and the ball hits to that side, you got to wait for the ball to go through. And he did not get himself in the pickle and gets put out. Batter is Darren Doty, grounded into a 4-6-3 double play with a run scoring in the first inning. Jorgensen is at second base. Pitch to Doty. That ball hits to the alley, and that's going to be trouble. That will get through all the way to the wall. Jorgensen comes around third and scores. On his way to second is Doty, makes the turn at second, and then puts on the brakes. Run scoring double for Doty. That's his fifth run batted in, and Washington now leads by a score of 3-1. to one. For Doty, that was his first extra base hit of the season. Well, he sure waited back nicely on that and, and just exploded the bat into the zone. Looks like a strong young man, number 24. Here's Brett Merrick, who hit a comebacker to end the first inning to Andrew McNally. One ball and no strikes to him here in the top half of the third inning. We will play the Midas touch inning in the bottom half of the fifth. Breaking ball there at the knees for a strike, one and one. Two outs here in the third inning. Washington has manufactured a run. Merrick swings and foul tips at the chef, one and two. And this is something you don't see all that often. Stanford has done it in the past, USC. And that is have a pitcher serve as a designated hitter. Mm. But why not? If the guy's got the, the ability to swing it, might as well let him do it. Merrick strikes out. That ends the inning. One run on two hits, one left. For Washington, we go to the bottom of the third. It is now 3-1. Husky. to the bottom half of the third inning. Rainbow basketball now 45-31 with 11-10 remaining in that game. We understand that uh, UTEP coach Don Haskins has been thrown out of that game. He was very upset, no doubt, by the way his team is playing. Cy Farinas leads it off for the Rainbows, who trail in this game 3-1 here in the bottom half of the third inning. Before we go any further with this game, I'd like to uh, send our best to Reeve Okimura, who is in Kapiolani. Hospital, Reeve, we send our best to you. Things will turn out well. That's on the outside edge, and it's one and one. So well, how's this guy, Cypherius? I'm sorry, did I interrupt yeah. you here? No, but Reeve Okimura having some uh, trouble with uh, leukemia at uh, Kapiolani, so we 
I want to send him our best. He's a rainbow fan, watches us all the time. Bunts, that is fouled. You asked me about Cy Farinas. Yeah, how is this guy Cy Farinas? Yeah. I mean, you know, you mentioned he's tied with uh, Franz Ewan for the leader in RBI for the uh, Rainbows. Now, he's a guy batting in the ninth spot, and there are young coaches around that if your number nine hitter is as productive as Cy Farinas, that you'd immediately put him up to the top of the order at one, two, or something like that. But, you know, Coach Murakami's a guy that, you know, he knows. He knows he's been around a while. You get a guy like this as productive in the number nine spot, you just leave him there. Because mm -hmm. inevitably, if you move him up top in the order or in the middle of the order, you know, he'd go 0 for February, the rest of February, maybe even most of March. Two and two to Farinas. What a night last night for Cy Farinas. He was two for two last night with two triples and three runs batted in. He has two doubles, three triples, and 14 RBI. He lifts this one to center field, starting back with Trippy. Now he's tracking it well, and he makes the catch. Perinus is retired, and we go to the top of the order to Corey Ishigo. Have you ever noticed the way Corey Ishigo takes pitches? All the way in, looks all the way into the catcher's Well, he does, and then he'll flip his bat. So with his, with, with him batting right-handed now, he'll, it's almost like he's donning a sword. Watch what he does if he takes this pitch with his, with his bat. See how he yeah. brings that? Now, from the other side, it's even more pronounced when he's left-handed. And every once in a while, he'll, you know, kind of stork-like back out of the, out of the, uh, the batter's box, but follows the ball all the way in, but you just don't see, this is a very rare thing. You don't see some people take pitches like this. Takes a strike there, another one, 0 and 2. Story of this game is just starting to be Chad Hartbixer. He has retired seven rainbows in a row. The 0 2 pitch to Ishigo. A bouncer up the middle over his new plays it off the dirt, throws the first in time. Washington with the pitching, and pitching makes the difference. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those who believes that good pitching beats good hitting any day. Absolutely. You have pitching, you will go a long way in this sport. The difference today, the Rainbows ganged up yesterday on pitcher after pitcher that Washington put out there. Today you put Hartvigson, he has now retired eight Rainbows in a row. The Rainbows have managed only two hits, both coming in the first inning. And the batter is Taguchi, he has one of those two hits. Ishigo had the other one. Someone asked me a question the other day, and I'm not sure with two outs I should bring this up, but I, I will just in case, uh, otherwise we'll carry it over. Who, somebody asked you, who do you think is the best player in baseball? And would you guess what my answer was, who my answer was? No, I didn't. I can't. I, I'm trying to. Wait, wait, let me see. Well, who are some of the choices? There's a fly ball to left field. Doty in the sunshine makes the catch. So that'll do it. I'll try to uh, figure that out when we come back. Best player in baseball today, according to Pal Eldridge. <laughs> Ooh, I can hardly wait. <laughs> <laughs>
Chevron series record. This is for Jimmy Vieira, who likes to see this early in the game. Series record, Hawaii leads 9-1 to one in the 10 games played, and you see the results of last night. Chevron with Tech Relief. Chevron simply smarter. Kristen Shuey leads it off in the top of the fourth inning, 3-1, Washington. Washington, three runs on five hits. The Rainbows, one run on two hits. Jimmy Vieira and his correspondent wanted to know in reading the box score in the paper what the initials meant. Ground ball rolls to Farinas, throws to Rogers, and sliding in safely is Shuey. Now, Rogers has had to do a dance at first base on many occasions this year, but Chewy really undercut him that time. Excellent base runner. And this is one of the few mistakes that you see Cypherinas make. The throw is high, but this is very good base running and good call by Bill Leonard at first base, but real good base running by the catcher, Christian Chewy, uh, who anticipated the high throw and got down. Sean Daly squaring to bunt. Shep fakes the throw off the first base line. What Jimmy Vieira wanted to know is that in the box score, what does WP mean? He thought it meant winning pitcher. No, W means winning pitcher next to the name. WP means wild pitch. There's a base hit to center field. Shuey makes the turn at second. Harrison gets it into Farinas. Two on, nobody out for Washington. Sixth hit off of Andrew McNally. And another question that Vieira wanted to know was uh, HBP in the box score. That means hit by pitch. So if you have any questions, just... Uh, well, there's a, a bunch of them. Yeah, and, there's, there's all And kinds. sometimes in some uh, publications, they're not the same. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like sometimes S stands for sacrifice, yeah. and sometimes SAC. Yeah. SB is stolen base. Mm -hmm. K's for striker. Brett Newell, Washington with possibilities here. Rainbows have a play at second, sliding back in at second base. It's Shuey. Shuey at second, Daly at first for Washington, and Newell, who singled to deep second base his first time, batting for the Huskies here in the fourth inning. Well, LOB, left on base. Yes. A would be attendance. Um, they have A for attendance in the bottom, don't they? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they do. Okay. A, A could also mean assist. Assist, yeah. P.O. put out. E for error. <laughs> we could go on and on. <laughs> Lua settling in. Shuey at second, Daly at first base. Rainbows have the infield really squeezed down. Newell shows bunt, takes a strike, one and one. Let's take a look at that basketball game now. 48-40, UTEP starting to creep back in. 7-53 remaining. The game being played in El Paso. Rainbows trying to win only for the second time on the road. One one pitch. That's over for a strike and it's one and two. Okay, best player in baseball. Oh yeah. Uh, best player in baseball. Well, the name that people throw out all the time is Barry Bonds. Yeah, because he's the highest paid. One two pitch. But that's not my pick. Really? Uh -huh. You know, you know who my favorite player is. It's Tony Pena. Tony Pena. Yeah. Another name thrown out all the time is Kirby Puckett. Yes. And yes. he's my number two pick. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, my number one pick. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. Please. I'll, 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 you want to know who I follow every day? Who? Mike Fetter. Of course. Yeah. I always look for those guys. Ground ball to Fair. To Ishigo. To Rogers. Five, four, three, double play. Kelly Fair was two steps away of stepping on third, but a good decision by his part because 
Does he get the force at third, maybe perhaps only get one, or does he go for two? Well, now, if the ball took him to his right, then he would continue to the base to touch it and then go the long way across the diamond for the, the uh, assist over there. But uh, as I, I agree with you. That was a very good decision. Ball right at him. You go to your left, get the 5-4-3. Brian Rutz, the batter. Two down, a runner at third, and the pitch is up high. One ball and no strikes, two Rutz. Drum roll, drum roll. Wait, 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 now wait. Of course, Sid Fernandez. No, the all best right, player the best, in baseball. Okay, best player in, in all of baseball. In all of baseball. Go ahead. Roberto Alomar. Well, you think so, right? pick, yeah. Because he has it all. He's complete package. Fly ball to right field. Franz Ewan makes the catch to retire the side. So the Rainbows use the double play, their second double play of the game, to hold off Washington. The Huskies continue to lead at three to one after three and a half. And these are the teams from the Kahalu'u Little League in the training division, the Windward Warriors, the Angels, the Poi Pounders, and the Athletics. Here, there are the Poi Pounders. Great banner, guys. In the Miners, the White Sox, the Cardinals, the Mariners, and the Pirates. Welcome to the ball yard. Boy, they brought the whole league. Ron Juan leads it off for the Bows in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Pitch by Hart Vixen, taken high, one ball and no strikes. Also here in the stands are the IA Little League Pirates, minor division. 10 to 11 year, years old, their coach Lloyd Okubo. We don't know where they're sitting. Charging for the ball is the third baseman, Daly, throws to first in time. IA, they, they spread them all out. They're all over the place, but they are here. See, the reason I think Roberto Almar is the best player in baseball because when I say complete package, you include arm strength, arm accuracy, running speed, hitting ability, and power. And he's got them all. Mm -hmm. Now, you look at Barry Bonds. I mean, yeah, he hits for average. He hits for power. Plays decent defense, but and he runs okay, but he, he doesn't throw well. Give you a good example when Sid Bream scored from second base when Carrera, Cabrera hit that mm -hmm. the ball that single, that was Barry Bonds that threw the ball home. Now if you're going to score Sid Bream on a ball hit like that, yeah. the guy can't throw. He's still I mean, he's still a great player, no question about that. And he's playing for our team now, so we're going to cheer for him this year. He's playing for the Giants. That's huh? right. Excellent play, by the way. Uh, by Sean Daly at third base. I mean, that was a do or die throw just to get Ewan. Two and one to Rogers. Hartington continues the string. 
He has retired 10 rainbows in a row. Your car is your star player to help keep it performing its best in your weekly trip around the bases. Try high quality Chevron gasolines. The cleansing power of Techroline Chevron. Simply smarter. You know, we have talked many times over the years about the angle of delivery from certain pitchers. When you look at Hart and basically he's an overhand thrower, but watch the angle of the ball if he gets the ball down in the strike zone. Base hit, right trail. That gets fine, we'll go to the wall. Rogers on his way to second up with the ball is Wimmer. Rogers is going to try for three. Here comes the throw, he slides in, he is out at third base. Rogers got greedy, a little too greedy. Credit Wimmer and credit the cutoff man for a perfect throw to third baseman Sean Daly. Yeah, this was an excellent relay. The ball from the right fielder Wimmer now goes to Ryan Rutz, who fires a strike. And you see Rogers with his left hand slide right into Daly's tag at third base. Look at that. I mean, he just, like, the ball was right in the glove where yes. he was going to slide. Yes. And there was no, uh, there was no doubt about that. He slid right into the tire. It continues 3-1 Washington. Well, does it go down as, uh, as a string? He was retired at third base. Rob Williams swings and misses. Well, he, he actually... Got a board and double yeah. though, yeah. He did. So Williams will step in again with the count, one ball and one strike. What a change up. Ooh, took something off, huh? What I was talking about was the angle of delivery. So when he releases the ball, it's on a sharp angle downward. Now, if he gets the ball up in the zone, then guys that throw overhand usually get hit pretty hard. That one that Rodgers hit was a little bit up. That's fouled off, and will end up in the Washington bullpen. See, that's one of the reason, reasons people in the big leagues like tall pitchers. And you look at the best pitchers in baseball, and they all are high three-quarter or overhand deliveries. Well, let's take Nolan Ryan, Roger Clemens. You can say Brett Saberhagen. All these guys are high three-quarter or overhand. They're not low three-quarter or sidearm guys. Those are mainly your relievers. Williams chases and strikes out. Second strikeout by Hartvigson. Rainbows get one hit in the inning, but Rogers is thrown out trying to stretch it into a triple. And after four full innings of play, it remains Huskies by two. They move to the top half of the fifth inning and back up at the top of the order. Joe Trippi, who is one for two, he scored a run. Washington center fielder will lead it off. Then Matt Wimmer, the right fielder, and Randy Jorgensen, the first baseman, against Andrew McNally. 
McDally has given up three runs on six base hits. He has struck out one. He has not walked anyone, and he has been charged with one wild pitch. Remember when uh, Trippy was up and we were discussing the outfield movement, and I said that the only time you should move your outfield is, is if the guy consistently hits the one spot. Well, you look at the Rainbow outfield now, and they're playing Trippy to hit to that side. Yeah. So Gucci's over. So is Harrison. So is Frankie Ewan in right field. Gucci about four steps over toward the left field line, and Ewan in right field about 10 steps away from the right field line where he usually plays. Three one pitch. It's over for a strike. One, you know, outfielders are brave too. Because they're out there by themselves. Mm -hmm. They're like the defensive backs. <laughs> they're, they're the defensive backs of, of baseball. Hard hit ground ball on one hop. <laughs> Vacuum by Rogers. That's on the base. Yeah, so what does Trippy do? I'm laughing. What does Trippy do? He pulls it that time. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mississippi State, Coach Ron Polk, I mean, when you talk about innovations, you talk about in college baseball, Ron Polk of Mississippi State is a guy that believes in all these things. He has an infield that you come to the park just to watch infield. The game is secondary compared to their infield. But he has his outfielders moving according to the pitch count. So you watch Mississippi State. I mean, every count, every pitch, they're moving one way or the other. Really? Yeah. But what a team they had several years ago. Uh, in what, 83, 84? Yes, yes. Saw them all right here. Uh, we saw Will Clark. Will Clark, yes. Rafael Palmyro. Yeah. Bobby Thigpen. Mm-hmm. Jeff Brantley, <laughs> saw them all. There's one other guy, too. I can't remember. Somebody said, you know, he was on the team, too. And I went, I didn't know that. The 0-2 pitch to Wimmer. That's outside on the count. Now one ball and two strikes. And also one of the, the uh, attendance leaders in the nation every year, Mississippi State, along with Fresno State, of course, right here at home in Hawaii. Mississippi State, the uh, place where you can drive your truck in there? Yeah, that's the place. Wimmer strikes out. Wimmer is uh, saying something to Keith Howe. And now uh, Ken Knudsen comes out. I wonder if they're claiming that it was a foul ball and was dropped by Chef. Maybe. Well, it didn't look like it from there. I mean, it's a foul ball. Why would Tyler Chef jump up and tag him? I guess you could find that as an argument. I guess they heard the point. No, he missed that. What do you think? He was very adamant about staying around. Second strikeout for McNally. Here's Randy Jorgensen. Jorgensen with the RBI single. He's reached the base twice. RBI single in the first inning. It was a race on a double play. And then he reached on a fielder's choice in the third inning. Came around to score on the RBI double by Darren Doty. Two outs here in the fifth inning. Pitch by McNally. Down low. When it comes to catering, there is only one name you can depend on. That's Marion's. Marion's Catering has been providing the people of Hawaii international cuisine, Japanese, Hawaiian, American, since 1942. Nobody does it better than Marion's catering. Good pitch by McNally, and the count two balls and one strike with two outs. Here in the fifth, in the bottom half of this inning, we will play the Midas Touch inning. Hope we have some winners tonight. 
And no, you do not have to take Tal and myself to dinner if you win. No. It's not part of the deal. Well, we wouldn't mind it, huh? Well, it's, I mean, <laughs> but, but it's your choice. If you, it's, it's your choice. You have a $100 dining certificate from KHNL. If you want to take us out with you, be mindful that it's only $100. <laughs> That could just be the bar tab. <laughs> Jorgensen back in, two balls and two strikes. McNally's 2-2 offering. Bounce up the first base side, waiting for it is Rogers. He will underhand to Andrew McNally. And Washington goes in order in the top half of the fifth. When we come back, it's the Midas touch inning. Rainbows trail by two. Welcome to the Midas Touch Inning. If you would like to participate, put your name, address, telephone number, and the number of runs you think the Rainbows will have scored by the time, or at the time, that your card is picked. Send it to Midas Touch Inning, 1415 Dillingham Boulevard, Honolulu, Hawaii, 96817. And then sit back and have some fun. We are ready to go tonight. Ken Harrison will lead it off in this Midas Touch Inning, the bottom of the fifth. Kenny, 0 for 1. He struck out his first time against Chad Hartvigson, who is cruising along against the Rainbows, allowing one run and only three hits. First pitch to Kenny. So run and miss. And the first card we picked is Bill Denkel of Fuelay Circle in Honolulu with a guess of zero. Ooh, Bill. Rainbows have one. So if you put one on your card. There's a chance. Bill will receive uh, the famous Midas Touch cap and T-shirt and a $25 gift certificate from Midas. And his card will be thrown into the big hopper for the trip to Las Vegas at the end of the season. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on and missed. And it's now 1-2. and two. Kenny appears to be over swinging a bit. He came up the first time with the wristbands and he now has thrown them away. Well, he struck out on the curveball that started at the inside, uh, right down the middle and broke outside. We'll see if he gets it again. That's called strike through. He knew it. Third strikeout. Well, this isn't the big bender that he struck out on last time. It looks to be a slider that sneaks in there for a call third strike. Kelly Fair is 0 for 1, grounded to the shortstop, Brett Newell. And the second card we picked is Haruo Sato of Kupu Lane in Lihue, the guess of seven. Ooh. Oh, we want to wish everybody watching on the island of Kauai tonight our best to you. Hope that your insurance woes will not last a long time. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Ground ball to Newell, waits for the bounce. For the first 
is in time. And the Rainbows now have two outs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And the Rainbows have hit more ground balls tonight than we have seen in a long time, which means that Hartvigson really has his stuff working. And the batter will be Tyler Sheff, who grounded out to the shortstop Newell his first time. And our third card is a winner. Ooh. Kelly Morioka of Wynum Avenue in Honolulu. You guessed one. And they have scored one. And you that's a hundred dollar no, winner. That's a hundred dollar no, restaurant. Yeah. So <coughs> Kelly Morioka. Think about taking us out. I mean, we are <laughs> we are good fun. No, it's up to you, Kelly. That's uh hundred dollars coming your way. A gift certificate for restaurant fare from KHNL Television in Honolulu. And congratulations for winning tonight in the Midas Touch Inner. She picked one. The Rainbows have one on the board. Her card was picked. And she is a winner. Oh, and two to Kelly, rather to <laughs> Tyler Chef. Gee, I'm thinking about Kelly Morioka. Yes, thinking about the entree. <laughs> One-two pitch to Tyler Shep lays off the ball and takes it outside in the count two and two. Rainbows and the Huskies will meet tomorrow in game number three, and we will start tomorrow's game at three o'clock. Three of the clock. PM. Call strike three. Hartvigson strikes out two in the inning. He has four strikeouts for the game. Congratulations to Kelly Morioka of Wynum Avenue in Honolulu. A winner tonight in the Midas Touch inning. Thanks, everybody, for playing. We go to the sixth. Rainbows trail 3-1. Move to the top half of the sixth inning. Darren Doty will lead it off. He is grounded into a double play. And he is doubled, driving in a run. So he is one for two. First pitch over by Andrew McNally. Three runs on six hits for Washington. One run on three hits for the Rainbows. Pitch by McNally. Hard hit ball. That's off the restraining front. If you're a diamond lover, Westport is a place for you. You'll find everything you need for the baseball diamond and more at Hawaii's number one baseball store. SSK gloves, Mizuno undershirts, Easton and TPX bats, everything for every ball player. Their professional staff can help you find what you need for your league team or every, or even yourself. How's that? Stop in at Westport in Waipahu or at its Kalihi location, Hawaii's baseball headquarters. That's Westport in Waipahu and also in Kalihi. 
one and two the count to Doty. The one two pitch by McNally gets him. Third strikeout for Andrew McNally. And the batter will be Brett Merrick. We'll take a look at this pitch again. You see the Tyler Chef setting up outside. And here's the hammer. A curveball gets the outside corner. Nice pitch. Andrew McNally. Merrick swings and misses the count 0 and 1 to him. He is grounded out meekly on a comebacker to McNally to end the first inning, and he struck out to end the third inning. McNally crowds him with a fastball, and it's 1 and 1. You're right about Andrew McNally because McNally really explodes that fastball. It is a quick fastball. That time he took something off and missed two. Uh, Two balls in one strike. Well, this is a wonderful game to watch. I mean, both pitchers get rid of the ball quickly. They don't stand around in between pitches and you know go through gyrations or whatever to prepare to pitch. Both pitchers have not walked anyone. We're in the sixth inning, and the game is about an hour and a half old. That's wonderful. Yes, it is. Two-two pitch. That's clink foul. No, not. He missed that. And having to throw up the line was Chef. Well, two points to comment on that play right there. First of all, Tyler Chef located the ball, and he's already in foul territory. Okay, so what he should have done, I mean, I'm, it's good that the play was a, was a put out and an out. But you see where the ball is. He's in foul territory. Now he crosses back inside the line. And you see the runner, Merrick, running inside the line. That's point number two. He's got to run in the box. So if that ball hit him, Merrick would have been out anyway. I thought the, I thought I heard a coin. Christian Shuey, the batter, on the 0-1 pitch to him. And misses, one and one. McNally comes back to the plate, 1-1. One, one. And that's wide. Two balls and one strike. Westport is in two locations now, one in Waipahu. That's almost a museum of sports equipment. For those of you who like uh, to play a form of baseball with a, what is called a wiffle ball or safety ball, the place to go is Westport. They have a lot of safety balls. I prefer the safety ball really to the wiffle ball. Safety ball reacts more like a baseball in the great wiffle leagues of all time. Throw to first by Fair. That retires the side. Washington goes in order in the sixth inning through five and a half. The Huskies lead 3-1.
Well, UTEP has caught up to Hawaii in basketball. That game played at El Paso. They've gone into overtime. Tied at 57. Well, the Rainbows have some catching up to do. They are two runs down in the bottom half of the sixth inning. And Chad Hartvigson is doing the job on the Rainbows. I mean, he has the Rainbows in a very meek fashion tonight. They haven't pinged him well at all. The biggest hit, Sean Rogers, doubled past a right fielder, Matt Wimmer, but Rogers was thrown out trying to stretch it into a triple. Cy Farinas takes a strike to start the bottom of the sixth inning. Well, Hart picks it just simply has good stuff. But he's a 78-mile-an-hour pitcher, which goes to show you don't have to be a flamethrower to get people out. I mean, the name of the game is to get people out. So you see how he first pitch was a fastball outside. Then he comes inside with a fastball. He's changed his speeds. He uses a good curveball. Throws a slider once in a while. So we're looking at a pitcher here, folks. Not a thrower. Not a wannabe pitcher. A full-on pitcher. The 0-2 pitch to Farinas. There's a fly ball to right field. Crossing over into foul territory is Wimmer. And he makes the catch for the out. Well, it's my hope, really, that Washington plays well tonight. And, of course, you know that I had to wait for that meeting to be over for 50 minutes to an hour before I could get into the locker room that they use as a locker, I mean, as a meeting facility where my locker is. And I had to wait until after 11.30 last night. So I just want Washington to play well, okay? <laughs> so that they don't have one of those meetings again. Here's Corey Shigo, one for two tonight, as you see. Shigo starting the third time around for the Rainbows. Hartvigson retired 10 Rainbows in a row. He is now retired after the double to Rogers, five in a row. And they say Corey Shigo went around. 0-1-1. If you're on a fresh salad diet or simply just love tossed greens, Zippy's has something delicious that'll satisfy any appetite. It's called... Italian chicken salad, and it's perfect and healthy. Ground ball to Ryan Rutz. Two down. Something that healthy never tasted that good, so try Italian salad today at Zippy's. Kirk Taguchi is one for two, single in the first inning. But so far, it has been a rather paltry effort for the Rainbows in this game. And the pitch of the plate swung on and missed as Hartvigson again puts a variation on the theme. Fastball right there. That arrives in a hurry, and it's 0-2, and, and you can see Hartigson starting to Gucci off with that bubble, that floater in there, and then all of a sudden he comes back with the blazing fastball. And to Gucci reeling, he is behind 0-2. So he has to dig in a bit. 0-2 pitch. He went around. So an easy inning for Chad Hartvigson. Rainbows go in order in the bottom half of the sixth inning. After six, it remains Washington three, Hawaii one.
Budweiser are fact from the gridiron to the diamond. Washington has two Sean Cox and Lawyer Malloy. The Rainbows have one Carlos Anderson. All DBs in football. Anderson making uh, the change for the Rainbows from DB to the outfield. Ground ball right back to McNally off the bat of Sean Daly. And there's one out in the top half of the seventh inning. We will take a look at Brett Newell, who grounded into a 5-4-3 double play last time. He's one for two in this game. Player from each team will be honored at the end of uh, today's game for going beyond the call. GT Hawaiian Tail will contribute to the General Scholarship Fund of the University of Hawaii. Owen one to count to Newell. On the other hand, Andrew McNally has pitched a, a credible game. Yes, he has. There's a fly ball to left. Kirk Taguchi makes the count. Newell is retired, and Ryan Rutz will be the batter. He is 0 for 2. He has flied out to left and flied out to right. there was, was a, a time when time was not granted Ryan Rutz put his right hand up and said time 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 and then stepped out McNally started a delivery and Keith Howe behind the dish didn't grant the time so that that was a, a good thing right there that Keith Howe did it was the correct it was the correct thing too hit off the handle that bounces off and to our, to our buddy there's Johnny Rouse he got one last week he missed one and he flips it up to the youngster. What a seat he has. Huh? He's there every game. That's a great seat. That's popped up, and that will find the roof. And I'll let you uh, go into the volume and ask me. Certainly. One of the, one of the great questions about Okay. Longest time between angering an umpire and getting ejected. Longest time between? Yeah. You mean getting an umpire mad at you and then getting ejected? Right. Gee, I don't know. Got to be uh, five innings, eight innings. How about four years? Four years? It happened in 1914 to 1918. Umpire Bill Clem hated the name Catfish, so naturally people, the players always tease him about it. So New York pitcher Jeff Tesro kept calling him catfish. <laughs> he, he learned that four years later he got him back. <laughs> he kept that, huh? There's a blooper into center field. Harrison coming on. That will drop in for a base hit for Rutz. Rutz trying to go to second, and the hustle gets him there. Rainbow's kind of kicked it around in the outfield. And they'll charge the error to Kenny Harrison. Well, when Rutz hits this ball and he makes a turn around first base, you see as Harrison, you know, the ball comes up and he, and he misses it. But good hustle by Ryan Rutz because he took an aggressive turn and when Harrison missed the ball, he continued on to the second sack. We go to the top of the order now to Joe Trippi. McNally pitching with two outs, a runner in scoring position. Pitch misses inside, and the count one ball and no strikes to Trippy, who is one four three. See, although McNally has given up seven hits, he's scattered them out enough. I mean, he's cause has not been helped by a couple of big errors in the first inning. The E three by Sean Rogers eventually led to two runs, and you got another error here. Good pitch on the corner, one and two. Oh, 
Time requested. See, that was okay. The only thing uh, was that McDowell wasn't looking at home plate. Mm -hmm. So that was a plenty of time. There's a strike. You see, McNally's a little bit upset. You see him snap the, the glove at the ball. Now, what they're talking about, specifically Joe Ross, the third base coach, is that McNally quit a uh, quick pitch to him. Trippy just gets into the box. McNally's already in stretch, and Trippy swings the bat. I mean, just a practice swing one time, and the pitch comes. And I'll tell you what, they had a point, because McNally surely did pitch, quick pitch him. But hey, that's the way the game goes. One and two, the count holds there. Runner at second base is Rutz, Joe Trippi at the plate. Well, you don't see much quick pitching these days. 20, 30, 40 years ago, you used to see quite a bit of it. As soon as you get in the box, I mean, you're, you're considered being ready to swing the bat. That's high. Two balls, two strikes. That's, I can't say 20 years ago. That's kind of recent. Should be more than that. It should be maybe 30, 40 years ago, huh? Whatever you say. I mean, I'll be I'll still playing 30 years ago. <laughs> Swung on and missed strike three, and the inning is over. McNally, McNally registers a strikeout to end it in the seventh through six and a half, three one Washington. in El Paso in overtime UTEP defeats the Rainbows 68 to 67 here that's not a bad view the sun has set and the skies turn golden and pink purple ah yes pay no attention to the power lines <laughs> and the high rises Franz Ewan will lead off. What is interesting about this is that Chad Artvigson has faced the last 18 batters, and the last 18 batters have, uh, have been put out. Rodgers did get the double back in the fourth inning, but he was thrown out trying to reach third base. So Artvigson really has it going. He has uh, retired 10 in a row, now seven in a row. And the only blemish, if you can call it a blemish, a double by Rogers into the right field corner. He was thrown out trying to go to third. That he still registered an out. So the last 18 balls to come to the plate have been put out. Yeah, which, which means that Ishigo in the first inning gets on, and so does Taguchi, and the rest. Yes. So he's only faced two batters over the minimum.
So remember, early in this game, we said that the, the story of this game, we just started to write in Chad Hartvigson. Well, he has become the main character in this episode tonight of Rainbow Baseball. He has pitched a masterful game. 2-1 pitch. Ewan swings. One hopper down the line at third to Daly. Long throw is in time. 19. And most of the outs have come on ground balls. Sean Rogers, he was the last rainbow to reach base. He did so on a double. And then he tried to stretch it to a triple. And he was thrown out. So Rogers comes to the plate here in the seventh inning against Chad Hartvigson. And the Washington right-hander starts him off with a pitch way outside. Records Hawaii, your Kama Ina music shop, the home of Hawaii's hits at affordable prices, features this week the new release by Kaleo Okalani, Unforgettable Songs. Oh, that's a great album. Available now at Records Hawaii, your best choice for Hawaiian music. 1314 Kapiolani at P.E. Koi. That ball, half to the center field. Trippy going back, turns around and makes the catch. Trippy stayed with it. Well, that's 20. Well, for a minute here, I thought that Trippy in center field lost this ball as he turns his back on it. See how he starts back to his left, then he turns around. But he has the presence to turn around and make the catch. Rob Williams 0 for 2, he has flied out, and he has struck out. One ball and no strikes. Chad Hartvigson, who started at Notre Dame, he is from Seattle. He went to Juanita High School, 1989, his senior season. He was the team MVP, all-conference. He was all-state after leading his league in wins and strikeouts. Also lettered in basketball and football, which runs pretty much what pitchers are. I mean, they are your best athletes. The 1-1 pitch. Williams lays off the ball, two balls in one stroke. drive deep to left field. Darren Doty going back near the warning track and he makes the catch to retire the side. Rainbows again go in order in the seventh. Last rainbow to reach base was Rogers with his double since then. Hartvigson has been superb.
Glad to be with us Monday evening at 8 as our coverage of Rainbow Volleyball continues with a Mountain Pacific Sports Federation match between number four Hawaii and number five Santa Barbara. Join us for explosive action of men's volleyball Monday beginning at 8 on Fox 13. First pitch, a one hopper by Wimmer to the third baseman Kelly Fair. No problem. Washington leads it three to one, two runs in the first, one run in the third. The Rainbows responded with a run in the bottom of the first. That has been it. Randy Jorgensen will come to the plate. He had an RBI single in the first inning. Reached on a fielder's choice, scored a run in the third. And he grounded to the first base with the pitcher assisting in the fifth. Comes back to the net in the count on one. This is the sort of game, really, that uh, no pitcher deserves to lose of the two that are out here. I mean, McNally certainly has pitched well enough to win. It's just that Hart Vixen has been superb against his teammates. Oh, and two the count to Randy Jorgensen. You know, right now, partner, let us send our birthday wishes to Doc Sasaki. Now, he's had a surprise party at his girlfriend's Wendy's house. <laughs> okay, so this is from us and from Gail Oshita, and I just hope the party's already started, because it's not otherwise, a yeah, we, yeah, it's not a surprise anymore. Check swing, ground ball foul up the third base side by Jorgensen. Oh, the, you know, the services that we provide. Yeah, happy I mean, birthday, Doc. That's another one. Happy birthday, Doc. I hope it's a surprise. Hey, big whoops to you tonight, big guy. <laughs> Jorgensen back in 0 and 2 There's a count to them here in the top half of the eighth inning. Three to one. Washington leading three runs on seven hits for the Huskies. One run on three hits for the Rainbows. The Rainbows tonight also have committed three errors. That's called strike three. Fifth strikeout by Andrew McNally. We take a look at this. Be mindful of the inside edge. That's too close. That's too close to let go. That ball was right there. Where uh, the umpire could make the call. That is the sixth strikeout. Instead of five, they are six. Darren Doty, the batter, and the pitch floats over for a strike. Good off speed. So you see that McNally... Very much like Hartvigson, changing speeds, changing locations. Emu, Kalua, Pig, Lao Lao, Raw Fish, and more. For the best in Hawaiian food, it's the Highly Hawaiian Food Store. To cater an affair or just a plate lunch, Highly's will design that special menu for a small party or a large bunch. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Low. Check out Hylies, and you will know for the best in Hawaiian food. Hylies is the place to go. Mike Perkins gets royalties on that every time you read it. 2-1 pitch. Hard hit ground ball. That's a base hit to left by Doty. Taguchi on the retrieve. That is the eighth hit by Washington. And the second by cleanup hitter Darren Doty. Now you see how strong he is, how he can get that barrel of the bat out in front? It's a nice job of hitting right there. And we have a pinch hitter, Reed Johnson, will come into bat for Brett Merrick. Johnston appeared as a pinch hitter in last night's game. He was hit by a pitch. 
three for ten on the season. One double and one run batted in. Five nine senior from Brennan, Washington. Pitch to Johnson. Good pitch over the outside. 0 two. Two outs here in the eighth inning. Rainbows have to contend with Chad Hartvigson in this game, and he is definitely pitching the best performance the Rainbows have seen. Really held them down. Pitch is up high. Hartvigson pitched well, we, we said, back in 1990 when he was with Notre Dame. 1990, he was 3-1 with a 5.10 ERA for the Fighting Irish. Transferred to Washington, and he's really done the job tonight on the boats. Swung on and missed, strike three. Seventh strikeout for Andrew McNally. Washington is finished in the eighth inning after seven and a half, three one Huskies. Hartvigson tonight, 82 pitches. He has allowed one run on only three hits. He has struck out five. He has not walked anyone. No wild pitches, no hit batters. He has cruised through this Hawaii lineup. He retired 10 in a row. And then uh, Rogers had his double. It was thrown out at third, and now he's retired another 10 in a row. The last 21 rainbows that have come to the plate have ended up being outs. And the Rainbows will now start pinch hitting. So Ryan Fujitani will come in. We have not seen Ryan in a long time. He's been injured. He comes in to bat here in the bottom half of the eighth inning for Kenny Harrison. Harrison had a dismal effort today against the Hartington, striking out twice. And the first pitch is high. One ball and no strikes to Ryan Taguchi. Well, in the first series against Arizona State, uh Fujitani dove on the ball and, and hurt his throwing arm, his shoulder. And so only uh, last week he began swinging the bat. Did I say Taguchi? Fujitani. Fujitani. All right. Or I don't know. Fujitani. He's another one of those uh, Kamehameha yes. warriors. Yes. He's a senior. 2 0 pitch. the count Randall. Ball four. Fujitani walks. And the batter will be Kelly Fair, who has grounded out twice, both to the shortstop, Newell. Washington goes to double play depth. And Kent Knudsen will come to the mound for the Huskies. 
Hawaii Dental Service, quality dental plans for over 30 years. We're backed by more than 96% member dentists who trust in and service Hawaii Dental Service subscribers. I'm sure at this point in the game, it's not what Hart Dixon wanted to do. Is obviously is, is walk the leadoff hitter. That's his first walk. That's right. So the Rainbows now have the tying run at the plate. They trail three to one. Hart Dixon ready to work to Kelly Fair, and the pitch is there for a strike. Rainbows are not going to uh, play the waiting game against Hart Dixon. Not the way he has pitched tonight. Those have got to do it with their backs. They need some big pings here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. That's high. One ball and one strike. Fujitani to his lead. And the pitch way inside. Good save by Shuey. Two and one. Right now, Kelly Fair represents the tying run. So you know that on the hill that Hart Fixon is going to be bearing down on him. Because he, he knows that fact as well. Two and two. Baseman left turns, throws for one relay to first. Double play. What a play by Rutt at second base. Ryan Rutt able to range and then having to turn all the way around to feed perfectly to Newell. And Fair hits into a 4 6 3 double play. Look at that yeah, turn. And watch throw. how fast he does that. And of course, Newell, the thing I'm most impressed about him is he's got a big league arm. Without, without a cannon like that, there's no way they're going to turn uh, the back part of that double play, but outstanding play by Ryan Rutz. Rainbows have two outs. Sheff swings and misses. He is 0 for 2. Fujitani walking also ends that string of 21 batters who have um, ended up being outs. Now Fujitani's a race on a double play. So Hartvigson really has things going. Chef swings and powers a foul. And which count 0 and 2. Oh, which means with two out of the eighth inning that Hart Fixon has still only faced two over the minimum, right? Yes. We haven't seen a pitching performance like this in a long time. Chef back in for the Rainbows. Remember, Washington is 0 and 5. This would be their first win of the season. That's outside. Just misses. One ball and two strikes. Tyler had a great night last night. Three for three. Three runs batted in. The one-two pitch. Breaking ball. Lifted to right field, but twisting and dropping up against the wall in foul territory. The count will hold one ball and two strikes here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Here's the one-two pitch to Tyler Sheff. That swings. It just, it just clinks it foul off uh, to the right side. Count holds right there, one and two. Attendance tonight, 3,306. And they distributed 4,728 tickets. That's 
foul back to the net. So Chef hanging in with two outs here in the bottom of the eighth inning. It misses. Sixth strikeout for Hart Vixen. Rainbows do not score in the bottom half of the eighth inning. We go to the ninth. Washington holding up. And he leaves 3 1. Tony Napu Noah has gone into play center field now for the Rainbows as we enter the ninth inning. Washington leading three to one over the Bows. Yeah. And Governor John is in his with uh, Hugh Yoshida, the interim athletic director here at the University of Hawaii, looking on. First pitch to Christian Shui is lifted to Jody Napu Noah in center field. So one pitch, one out in the top of the ninth. Three runs, eight hits for Washington, one run on three hits for the Rainbows. Glad you're looking in tonight, wherever you may be, throughout these magnificent Hawaiian Islands. Well, this is the first time we've seen Jody Napuunoa in the outfield. And the first batter hits one to him. Might as well baptize him right away out there. Yeah, it didn't take them long, huh? Sean Daly, the third baseman, one for three. Pitch by McNally, little looper. Now Puanoa in a hurry going out as a Shigo. He's Shigo, what a catch! He <laughs> Shigo just would not give up on that ball. He would not concede the base hit. Wonderful play by Shigo. Awfully tough to go and catch one over your head like that. But the ball held up enough for him to do it. Nice job, Corey Ishigo. Two down. The pitch to Brett Newell is over for a strike. On one. There's a two pitches, two outs, too, wasn't it? Yes. So naturally, Newell was taking then. Pitch by McNally. Off-speed breaking ball is clinked foul, and it's 0-2. Tomorrow, 3 o'clock start time. Hope you can make your plans to be with us here at Rainbow. If not, we'll have it for you on Fox 13. There's a fly ball to right field. Finds Ewan coming near the foul line in foul territory. Good. Solid running catch. Washington goes in order in the top of the ninth. Rainbow's two down as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning.
Well, Chad Hartvigson has picked himself a gem tonight for Washington. One of the best performances against the Rainbows in a long time. Hartvigson has really handcuffed the Rainbows. The Rainbows have left only one on base the whole game. Hartvigson has been superb. He's been better than that. The Rainbows have been off balance all night. He has mixed his locations and speeds to perfection. Cyferinus leads off in the bottom of the ninth, and the first pitch to him is down low, one ball and no strikes. Farinas 0 for 2, he flied out to center and flied out to right. Well, even if Hart Dixon has only walked one, Cyferinus will probably take every pitch until he gets a strike. And there it is right there. Three runs on eight hits for Washington. Hartvigson has allowed one run on three hits. He has struck out six. He has walked one. A one one to Farinas. Strike two. And you can see Cy a little bit upset with himself right there for not going after that pitch. See, with a guy like Hartvigson who throws strikes the way he does and the effectiveness of his overall pitching, you don't want to you want to get him early in the count. You don't want to wait for two strikes because he's got a variety of pitches to throw at you here. One two pitch up high, two and two. Andrew McNally pitched a very solid game. McNally, nine innings, gave up three runs on eight hits. He struck out seven. He did not walk anyone. And he was charged with one wild pitch. There's a bouncer over the mound. Newell charges. Throw to first is in time. And Washington now, two outs away from their first victory. That ball was caught in the webbing by Jorgensen. He had to look at it twice, make sure he held on. And we go to the top of the order to Corey Ishigo. What a catch by Ishigo in the top half of this inning. I mean, it is quintessentially the maximum effort, just not allowing that ball to drop. Ishigo is one for three. He is one of the three hits for the Rainbows, and it happened his first time up. Well, that effort that you saw that Corey made to make that catch is the, really the reason that he's playing at the Division I level because of the desire that he has. All in one to Ishigo. Well, I, I thought, I think that Keith Howes had a pretty good game behind the plate. That one pitch, however, was not in the strike zone that he called a strike. But overall, he's, he's done well. A one. Breaking ball, that's just nubbed foul. And the count 0-2, so Hartvigson ahead on Ishigo here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Clink foul off uh, to the left side and Ishigo hangs in. Ishigo has struck out only once this year. He's a bulldog of a hitter in the leadoff spot. He's walked 13 times. And consistently gets the bat on the ball. Hartvigson ready to work the 0-2 pitch. Fastball bounced to the third baseman daily. Two down. Ishigo trying to dive in at first base. Crowd applauds his effort. And it comes down now to Kirk Taguchi. That's one of this, uh, the great things about baseball is that the Rainbows can dominate last night 16 to 6. Batter Washington pitchers test the limits of the ballpark. And tonight, they are anything but that. That's a strike. Well, we saw the same thing last week. Hawaii winning the Friday game, 21 to six, and California coming back winning the next game, three to two. And you prove your point right there. What a pitch! Oh, and two. Hartvigson now, one pitch away from a complete game victory over the Rainbows and the first victory of the year for the Washington Huskies and the best performance against the Rainbows this season. Ground ball to the second baseman, Rutz. Poetic justice. The little guy throws him out. 
and the Rainbows lose it to an outstanding pitching performance by Chad Hartvigson, who goes the distance. And the Rainbows never caught on to him all night long. There's the final, Washington 3, Hawaii 1. We'll talk about it when we come back. Well, tonight's players, who have really went beyond the call, are players of the game. The two starting pitchers both pitched complete games. Chad Hartvigson from Washington was the winner. He went nine innings, gave up one run on three hits, struck out six, and walked one. And Andrew McNally is the player of the game for the Rainbows. He pitched nine innings, gave up three runs on eight hits, struck out seven, did not walk anyone, and was charged with one wild pitch. So Andrew McNally can only be concerned with his performance and his teammates' performance because his performance was right there today, very solid, but his teammates ran up against Chad Hartvigson and pal Hartvigson pitched a gem of a game. An absolute gem, partner. Two batters over the minimum, meaning 29 batters is all that he faced. We haven't seen a pitching performance like this in a long, long time. I think about three, four years ago when Sean Reese from Arizona State came into town and did the same thing was the last time so great pitching performance and a well-deserved honor for Chad Hartvigson. Well Washington wins their first game of the year they are now one and six on the season the Rainbows are eight and six on the season. Here are the totals for uh, UW University of Washington three runs eight hits they committed no errors and they left five for the Rainbows one run on only three hits they committed three errors and they left only one on the bases. Chad Hartvigson is the winner he is one and oh Andrew McNally, the loser, he is one and two. Coming up next on Fox 13, it's a double dose of cops, and our coverage of Rainbow Baseball continues tomorrow afternoon at 3, live from Rainbow Stadium with the final game of this three-game series between the Bows and the Huskies. Until then, for Pal Eldridge and for our director, Aaron Iomasa, this is Jim Leahy wishing you the best from Rainbow Stadium, where Washington defeats Hawaii 3-1. to one. This has been another live sports presentation of Hawaii's very own Fox 13, Malama Pono. <laughs>